there's no easy journey. Along the way, you know, you would have setbacks. If you stick with the journey and always be positive about it, there's no doubt that you can get there. My name is Roland Butcher, I'm former Middlesex and England Test and one day, one day international cricketer. I played 20 years for Middlesex as a professional and also played, as I said, one day and ODIs for England. First and foremost, I would like to say that I was very honoured um, to have played for England and the honour of being the first black player to play for England also with, you know, was a tremendous feat for me and not just for my family, but also for any person in, the, in England who came from a diverse background who wanted the opportunity to perform at the highest level. Um, obviously, being selected to play for England, as I said, it was a great personal achievement because as a youngster growing up in the Caribbean, what I wanted to do was to play international cricket. I had no idea at the time that it would be for England because living in the West Indies, naturally you would think it would be for the West Indies. But having had the opportunity to come to England and then develop through the system and got the chance to play for England, you know, that was very satisfying. And I think that has really shaped the way that I have thought after that um, about certainly diversity and giving people the opportunity to play at highest level. Yes, I mean, obviously you would have had to face many challenges because back then, you know, no one of, uh, no black person had ever played for England. So obviously the, there must have been some players before who were good enough and couldn't play for whatever reason. Um, I think the first challenges that I had to face was I came to England at age 13 and a half um, into a new culture, uh, different game, different weather, um, everything was different, even to a new family, because I came here with my sister who was born in Barbados as well, but I came into a family where we already had two other brothers and, and two other sisters. So, you know, that was all very, very difficult to get used to, um, get used to going to school. And also the important thing for me was that I didn't see a lot of people playing cricket. Everybody was playing football. So those are challenges that I had to, in the early days I had to go through. As, a, as my career developed, um, obviously there would have been other issues as well, but you know, that didn't stop me from wanting to achieve my goals. So eventually playing for England was the ultimate because that's what I aim to do. It certainly has influenced it because, I mean, if you think of my journey in the Caribbean, um, I grew up very much um, as a country boy, um, right out in the country, not a lot of things to do, limited in terms of what you could do sport-wise. You either played cricket or you did track and field. Um, where I lived was about 12 miles from the capital. Everything happened in the capital. So really, you know, I didn't get to the capital that often. Uh, then you, you actually come to England and, it, you know, it's a different ball game. Everything is there for you, uh, people willing to, to help. And um, there's much more support, obviously, in England for anybody who wants to develop, whether it's a sports person or otherwise. Um, so those were some huge differences that obviously I had to come to terms with. You know, in the Caribbean, you've got sunshine 365 days of the year. I arrived in England in May. The weather was supposed to be warm. To me, it was absolutely freezing. Um, so, you know, to get used to all of that, as you said, you know, the food, the weather, um, you know, the way... In the Caribbean also, you know, you spend your whole life as a kid around black people. And suddenly you're in a, a society where you're seeing lots of English, lots of Asians, lots of Chinese, you know, it's a whole new ball game. So it's a real cultural shift. And I guess luckily for me, the fact that I came from the Caribbean, I was able to adjust to that. I'm sure it was much more difficult for kids who were born here of ethnic minority um, they would have had it much more difficult than myself because I had never really um, had any racism um, in the Caribbean. So I missed really 13 years of that. And listen, I think it's very, very important, you know, to have somebody that looks like you at the top level, regardless of, you know, whatever color, religion, sex, whatever, 
you know, it is so important to have somebody who, you know, you can think their journey is similar to yours. Uh, you know, fortunately for me, when I was selected for England, what it actually did was it inspired the likes of Devil Malcolm and Will Slack and Norman Cowens and Chris Lewis and those guys to believe that, hang on, you know, if he can do it, so can I. And those guys went on to eventually play for England the same way that I did. But so having somebody um, in that position, it gives others a lift to believe that they can do it. They still have to put in the hard work because you don't achieve anything without hard work. But the important thing is that you can see the light at the end of the tunnel because somebody's done it before. And that gives you a real belief. I mean, that's a very interesting question. And I think really the ECB has a key role to play as the governing body for cricket in, in England. You know, they really have to make the game accessible to all people. Um, There's a matter of color or race or gender. I think they must give everyone the opportunity to play the game. Not everyone's going to be an international player. Not everyone wants to be an international player. But I can, they can still derive great benefit from playing a game of cricket. I mean, the fact that you can be part of a team, um, you can do things together, uh, you can learn teamwork, um, et cetera, et cetera, leadership. You know, those are skills that's required in the rest of your life. So the ECB has a major role to play. And the important thing is that they must make the sport accessible to any and everyone, male or female, who wants to play. I, I believe that female cricket, you know, is the future. Um, as a result of that, one of the things that I've done in the Caribbean now, since December last year, I've started the Barbados Rolls Girls Cricket Club. First girls cricket club ever in Barbados and in the Caribbean. And the whole reason for that really is for social change, to give all girls the opportunity to play the sport and to develop as persons. So yeah, I think female cricket has great legs in the future. Well, sport really is a major breaker down of those barriers. You know, the fact that people of different colors, different ethnic minorities, um, different genders, et cetera, can come together and play um, a sport. And normally when you play a sport, it is for a reason. You know, you're trying to win and in order to win, you have to do it as a team. So you can imagine all of those people coming together. That is just so, so important for life. Um, Everybody is not going to be um, a top player in whatever sport they play, but they can still get the same enjoyment, the same pleasure and the same life experiences out of it than anyone else at, at the top level. So it's extremely important. Yes, I mean, I was fortunate to be the director of sport at the University of the West Indies in Barbados for 15 years. And, you know, my job was really multifaceted. You know, I was in charge of 14 sports, started at the university where there's no sports program. So I had to really develop the sports program to bring it up to a professional level, to the point where we were able to have um, people in on sports scholarships and all the different um, sports develop the, the, the curriculum, develop the, the sporting facilities um, and give players then the opportunity uh, to go on and be, you know, if they, in cricketing terms, to be first class cricketers. Some of them became international players where they were still at university. Similarly with, with, with football and basketball and other sports. So, you know, it was a role that I really reddished. Um, it was really left field in terms of deciding to go and do it. I was offered the position because I think the principal at the University of West Indies, Professor Sir Hilary Beckles, who was a cricketer himself, um, felt it's something that he wanted to happen at the university. He felt it was something that I could do. And um, I went and the challenge was, you know, it was a real challenge and I, I enjoyed it. 15 years I ended up actually doing it for, so I must have done something right. Well, I would certainly say to any up and coming black um, sporting talent and not just black sporting talent. I think anybody who you know wants to be um, a, a top player is that there's no easy journey. Um, you know, first of all, you must have the goal of wanting to do it. You must then put in the work. You must have the desire. Along the way, you're going to have ups and downs. But I think you must maintain um, that focus that this is what you want to achieve. Along the way, you know, you would have setbacks, but you would also have people who will help you on that journey. And, you know, if you stick with the journey and always be positive about it, there's no doubt that you can get there. 
But then having got there, um, that's another ball game. You've got to work extremely hard to maintain uh, being at the top. And then you need to be a really good role model so that people in the future, you know, can come and say, I want to be like that person. And for these reasons. I think the legacy I want to leave in the game is that, you know, I was able to achieve uh, what people thought was impossible. Um, the fact that I worked really hard to achieve it, got the opportunity to do that, to you know, have inspired others. And, you know, even though my days have finished as an international player, I think I still continue to assist people, you know, to reach their goals. So I think when I'm gone, I would really like people to see, uh, you know, that he, he did a very good job in ensuring that people of the future gets the opportunity to realize their dreams and to maximize um, how good they are.